नमस्ते एंड वेलकम बैक टू अविनाशी टेक वेर वी डाइव इन टू एम्बेड सिस्टम प्रोजेक्ट एंड ट्यूटोरियल वन एट अ टाइम प्रीवियसली ऑन दिस चैनल वी एक्सप्लोर हाउ टू पुट योर एन आर एफ फाइव टू डोंगल इन पेरिफरल मोड बट टूडे वी आर शिफ्टिंग गेट्स टू समथिंग जस्ट एज एक्साइटिंग बीकन और ब्रॉडकास्टर मोड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल एक्सप्लोर वॉट बी एल बीकन आर dive into popular advertising formats like ibeacon adi stone and even see how to create custom advertising formats and in upcoming videos we will show you a real world application using your beacon to automatically lock or wake up your devices based on proximity no buttons just presence whether it's building remotes with itty tiny playing games with your dongle board or breaking down lcd data sheets we are here to make embedded tech simple hands on and fun to learn if you feel the vibe hit subscribe all right let's start with a quick understanding of what a bluetooth beacon actually is in simple terms a bluetooth beacon is a device that continuously advertises data packets over ble but doesn't support connection requests that is it doesn't have a gate profile basically a beacon only speaks that is transmits advertisement data at a specific interval but never listens Where can you use beacons? Mm, quite a few places actually. You can use it in proximity sensing, where phone detects your presence, or also in automobile industry. We are seeing that beacons are used to automatically lock or unlock your vehicle based on your proximity. Then in indoor navigation, beacon is used to provide path guidance. Asset tracking. we monitor tagged objects or sensors in a warehouse we also use it for monitoring people that is event attendance logging or workforce logging let's open up vs code and create a new zephyr application you can go ahead and choose copy a sample and then select i beacon example next rename the project to something meaningful hit enter to save it lastly select the board target as nrf52840 dongle_nrf52840 once our build completes successfully let's explore the kconfig gui we will head over to the subsystems tab and under bluetooth you will notice that the broadcaster role is already enabled This is key. In an earlier video, we saw how to configure the NRF52 dongle in peripheral mode, but in this case, we are using it as a broadcaster, which is exactly what makes it behave like a beacon, sending out advertisements without maintaining connections. Next, go to the Bluetooth controller section. Here, you can select the transmit power level for your beacon. This controls the signal strength. of your broadcasts you can tune it based on your range requirements or power consumption preferences the next task is to remove the print k statements from the code and instead use uart based output this is especially important when we are working with the nrf52 dongle since it doesn't have a traditional debug console Now if you are not familiar with how to set up UART communication on the dongle don't worry I've already made a dedicated video that walks you through the entire process including how to connect the dongle's UART pins and view logs on a serial terminal so feel free to check that out before continuing here it will give you all the background you need so I have made certain changes in the code to incorporate uart based communication as well as i have also made slight changes to make the code more efficient i've added the header files 
this is the UART configuration. Then we have this URTX function responsible for transmitting the messages. Also, we have added macro UART debug. If you want to enable it, just enter one here. Else, leave it to zero. All right. Then this is the advertisement data. We have left it unchanged. Then we have changed some things in BT ready function. That is added the URTX based messages and a semaphore. Rest, it's pretty simple. We have enabled the Bluetooth, called the BT ready function, and since UART debug is right now disabled, so the TX messages are not sent. So, all right. So, the overall code is pretty simple and straightforward. We have our advertisement data structure and a Bluetooth function BT ready to start advertising. Let's now break down how the advertisement data from a beacon is structured. There are two popular formats, Eddystone and iBeacon. We will also look at a simple custom format that we will eventually use in our upcoming video. Let us begin with iBeacon. So iBeacon is a protocol which is developed by Apple, but it's important to understand it's not a hardware device that you can purchase from an Apple store. Instead, it's a Bluetooth low energy advertising format, a specific structure in which your device needs to broadcast data. Let's break it down. Every iBeacon advertisement starts with a three byte section, length, type, and our flag. In our example, the flag indicates no BR EDR, meaning it doesn't support classic Bluetooth. It's strictly BLE. Next comes the length and type where the type is 0 hex FF, which signifies manufacturer specific data. Here's what's inside that manufacturer data field. Company ID 0 hex 004C, which represents Apple Inc. Type 0 hex 02, which is an identifier that tells us this is an I beacon. Length 0 hex 15, which is 21 in decimal, and it is the number of bytes that will follow. UUID, it's a 16 byte unique identifier which acts like the beacon's fingerprint. Major and minor, these are user defined values often used for grouping beacons by region or purpose. TX power, this is the RSSI value at 1 meter used by receivers to estimate distance. All of this data makes up the iBeacon payload which is embedded inside a Bluetooth protocol data unit or PDU. The complete BLE advertising packet includes preamble, access address, PDU, which includes our iBeacon data, and CRC. This structured packet is what your dongle broadcasts repeatedly and what a phone or scanner app detects as an iBeacon. All right, let me build this code and be ready to flash the firmware to our NRF52840 dongle. Now let's open NRF Connect or desktop app and launch the programmer 2. I'll put the board into bootloader mode, which is just press the reset button while holding down the tiny onboard button. Once I've selected the device, I'll select the .hex file and then I'll click on write to begin the flashing process. Once the upload is complete and successful, we will switch over to the NRF Connect mobile app. I'll scan for nearby Bluetooth devices, and here it is our iBeacon shows up. When we tap on it, we can inspect advertising data, and you will recognize the fields we discussed earlier flags, manufacturer data, UUID, major, minor, and TX power. One thing to notice, there's no connect option next to our beacon. That's because it's operating in broadcaster mode, not peripheral mode. In contrast, when we used the dongle in peripheral mode earlier, that connect tab was present. Next, 
let's talk about Addiston protocol which is developed by Google and let me prepare the advertisement structure for it. So I've added a macro up here for iBeacon and Addiston and according to the selection we will populate our advertisement data. So in Addiston protocol we also start with a three wide flag field similar to last time we have no VR EDR option. Next comes the 4 byte Addystone service UID, which we have as 0 hex FE double A. So it is a 16 bit UUID. Then we have the service data. This starts with a 4 byte prefix and then up to 20 bytes of the main data payload. So Addystone supports multiple frame types like UID in which you can have a 10 byte namespace uid and 6 byte instance uid url frame in which we can have a url address and tlm frame some telemetry data can be there like battery status temperature status etc you can choose whatever frame fits your use case so let me first show you the url frame which we'll be using for our eddy stone beacon this frame begins with the frame type 0x10, which identifies it as a URL frame. That's followed by the TX power value. Next up, we have the URL prefix and then the actual compressed URL. Now, because of the strict length limitation of the Eddystone URL frame, we only get around 17 bytes to work with. I had to use an online URL shortener to shrink a YouTube channel link. All I did was copy this and eventually paste it here. Then separating them character by character. So we generated a tiny URL that fits within the required length. All right, with that setup, let me now build this code and be ready to flash it to our NRF52840 dongle. Once the upload is complete, I'll open up the NRF Connect mobile app and start scanning for nearby Bluetooth devices. And here it is, our Eddystone device shows up. When I tap on it, you can see all the advertising frame data we configured. And here's the cool part. Unlike the iBeacon example, this time we get an extra open option when we tap on it we are instantly redirected to our youtube channel home page just like that that's the beauty of Eddystone url simple fast and super useful for sharing links in a broadcast only vle environment lastly let's take a look at the uuid frame technically called the uid frame for our Eddystone beacon let me make some changes to this advertisement structure. So for our Eddystone beacon UID frame, I have added some changes again to the macro. And in our advertisement structure, we have frame type set to 0x00, which identifies it as UID frame. Right after that, we set the TX power, which represents the signal strength measured at a distance of 1 meter from this device. Next, we define the namespace ID. This is a 10 byte field that acts like an organizational identifier for a group of beacons. In my example, I've set it to Avinashi. And I have used the ASCII table to convert each character to its hexadecimal representation. Following that, we have the instance ID, which is a 6 byte unique identifier for each beacon device. Here, I have assigned it the label NRF001. And again, I've converted the characters to their respective ASCII hex equivalents. Once this data is defined in the code, I'll go ahead, build this project, and be ready to upload it to our NRF52840 dongle. Now, Let's open the NRF Connect app and scan for nearby Bluetooth devices. And here we go. Our Eddystone device 
shows up again. When we tap on it, you will see the exact namespace and instance IDs we configured. All of this is being transmitted as part of the advertising packet. Now, just like the iBeacon format, this addition UID data is also embedded in the PDU protocol data unit. So whether you are using iBeacon or Eddystone, you are essentially building a customized VLE packet, just with a different format. The reason developers use formats like iBeacon or Eddystone is because they come with ecosystem support, libraries, mobile SDKs, and tools for scanning and parsing are widely available. But for our upcoming application, I'll be using a custom beacon format, keeping it clean and simple. Let me go ahead and make changes to our advertisement structure for that. So after disabling all the macros for edit tool and iBeacon, we end up with our custom format. So in this, we will add no VR underscore EDR flag and 128-bit UUID to my advertisement packet. So it's pretty simple. I initially also thought of using scan response data, but later skipped it to keep things lightweight. Once you build this and upload it to your device, go ahead and open the NRF Connect mobile app and scan for nearby Bluetooth devices. And there it is. Our custom beacon shows up exactly as we defined it with a simple streamlined advertising structure. And that wraps up our deep dive into broadcasting with custom BLE beacons. We explored everything from standard formats like iBeacon and Eddystone to building our own lightweight advertising packets. If you found this helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more hands-on embedded tutorials. This is Avinashi Tech signing off. Until next time, keep building, keep experimenting and stay curious.